Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. Look, it's not that complicated. It's just supply and demand. Now there's a lot of outside interference that can change supply and demand, but those are just simply the two numbers that you need to look at. Anything else is just utter speculation. Standing in front of a house and going, look at this thing, it hasn't sold. And the guy on YouTube says, that's an indication things are crashing. Well, good. You're looking at one house, pal. You're not looking at the overall market. Tell me what the inventory is like in that neighborhood. Tell me what the asking price originally was. How far off was it from the comps? I've seen one that was 830000 He had to drop it to six forty, And the reality was it wasn't worth a dime over six twenty five to begin with. That's not an indicator, folks. So you want to look at indicators. And when I say supply and demand, let's take a look here at what we see right now in our market. And you can see that down here in 2021, we had supply of only 5,000 and we got down to like 4,500 down here. There was nothing out there for you to buy. And then when you did want to buy, you were competing with these people buying at the rate of like 11,000 homes at a time when there was only 5,000 homes available. Twice as many buyers there were sellers. You do the math. Prices went up. You ended up doing things you didn't want to do, like paying more for the house, waiving inspections, waiving the appraisal, competing with investors. It got ugly. For those that could get in, they did quite well. For those that sat out, don't beat yourself up too bad. Uh, there were people that made some very poor decisions. Now, as I look at our market right now and my simple seven-day moving average, you can see that new listings are going up at a pretty fast clip. Now, I look at this every day, and I just add up a seven-day average, and you can see the bottom line here is contracts. So this is coming out of the new year. So it always does this in January, and I go back and look all the way to last January as I roll this sheet back. You can see it did the same thing, and then it gradually started climbing as we got into February and March and our spring selling season. We did see some of the gaps close here, and that's when prices were still going up. But then as the gap between new listings and sales dropped off, like here, we saw prices starting to come down. This is a pretty big gap right here, so we're just going to watch it, see if it closes. And that gap is just another way to measure supply and demand. Kind of like a broken record, huh? Here's our active listing count right now for our market at 13000 689 889 last year we were at 17,000 we did it a peak at about 19,000 last year and sales dropped off like crazy so will this reach that peak well it hasn't yet so it's still trying to Cromford demand index is showing that it went down a little bit and just kind of took a little tick up the supply index did the same thing went up took a little tick down this only gets Updated once a month, and you can see that the total market is starting to come up just a hair, which indicates a little bit of optimism in the market. And if you look at our pricing, this is our annual appreciation by price range. Look at this. Anything over $2 million had a pretty good year. 7.5 to 10 million up 9.5 percent down here in the lower price ranges, especially 450, 400 to 500, down 4.1 percent annually they were the ones that were affected the most by interest rates whereas in the upper um, price ranges they don't normally carry out mortgages so now the thing is looking ahead where are people pricing their homes right now well it's been pretty flat lined for a long time here people just hanging in there for your list price they make other adjustments like seller contributions um, closing cost contributions and uh, buying down your rate we're starting a little bit higher here by four bucks, 368. I expect this to climb up a little bit and then come back down to earth unless we see interest rate reductions. Now, interest rates help you with your payment. They don't make a huge impact on pricing right away. We are seeing that seller contributions are starting to go down just a little bit. Not a lot, but they went from 10,000 down to about 7,500 right now simply because rates have gone from 8% down to about 6.7. So that's going to kind of stay there. Be careful of the promise of rates being cut in March. That unemployment number that came out this last week is not going to help that scenario. We may not see cuts until May. But the thing is, nobody knows. 
Lenders don't know. Realtors certainly don't know. There's real estate agents out there telling you right now, get out and buy now because the rate cuts are coming and it's going to be busy and we're going to be back into the bidding wars. I don't see that. I don't see that because it's not showing up in the numbers. So you got to be a little bit cautious out there. But buying, look, if you want to buy a house, you're buying it for the long term. You just want to see if you can get in it and then you're going to stay in it. If you're selling your house, it's not panic time. They're not, you don't have too much inventory out there that's going to keep you from selling your house in the first quarter. In fact, it's looking quite favorable for you to be able to do that. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. I'd be happy to help you. Take care.